So I spent a bit of time in Mongolia, and of course the big story there is um, that the empire, the Mongol Empire, um, during Kublai Khan's reign was the largest that has ever been on the planet. And so I, I'm pretty interested in borders because, um, you know, I just Google searched maximum extent of the Mongol Empire, and you get these kind of these very different results for maps, right? You've got one that's just everything is red with everything else that is not the Mongol Empire being gray. Um, here they've shown a little bit of variation in the middle um, with just a very thick black border around the edge. And the point I'm trying to get at is, is similar to kind of the problem of, of generalization that we were looking at in our, in our choropleth maps. It doesn't really show a lot of diversity to just have a blob. Um, the other thing is they're all using very different projections. So I wanted to find kind of three of the best that, that mentioned in the map what projection they were using so we could compare the borders. And, you know, you can go around and kind of look at all these different examples, but um, I really liked this guy, uh, Ananda Roop Roy's map, uh, because it shows, um, you know, how during that maximum extent there was kind of this conate uh, system happening. And uh, it just has a... Very, very good eye for design and very good maps. Um, so I downloaded this from his portfolio here, and uh, you can check out his other maps. He's got a lot of really good maps going on. So shout out to Ananda Roop uh, Roy. The next one I got, um, and this is just through col you know, kind of culling through lots and lots of um, images. Um, the National Geographic image. Um, from the 90s, this they did a, an insert about the the Mongol Khans, and this is also, I think, a pretty good map. It shows um, a lot more kind of the relief and feel of the whole region, and then just kind of one color. But um, we do notice that at least they they differentiate within that that maximum extent boundary. Um, you know, something of uh, different conates, and then this is kind of the Empire of the Great Khan, which is all one color. This is this is the the center kind of of the empire, whereas these have more of a um, transparent kind of hollow center with a gradient fill on the outside. So I think that you know this is kind of an interesting thing. And then these principalities have there's no gradient like that. It just goes straight um, border and then completely transparent on the inside. So I, I like this one. I like, you know, obviously National Geographic makes amazing maps. Very good. Um, and then the other one I got was from the Met. And this one is okay. I think it's pretty good. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, it uses the Robinson projection. So I download those three. You can either kind of go and pause and, and look at the links or just kind of go to Aran uh, Ananda Roop. Roy's po profile. Uh, this one was on Pinterest, and there's the pin right there. Um, and then this one was at the Met Museum, kind of under the map section here. So you can download those or download the the shots I got from the internet on my website. And I want to look at these a little bit more detail, so I'm going to open that up. And the only other thing you need is a uh, country shape file. So go ahead and download anything. Even the one from our, our weather map um, project will work as well. So, um, yeah, here are some of the other things I downloaded. They're okay. Um, nothing that really blew my socks off here. Um, older maps, things like that. This one's uh, interesting just because it's put on a, on a Mercator projection. Um, there are a couple nice older style maps um, as well, and this one is very popular. But looking at the three that we're looking at now, I just I want to point out a few things um, to notice about this, and you should start getting better at this when you kind of look at maps in general. Um, the style of this map I think is fantastic. It's very nice. Um, the borders are are fairly generalized, which which might be appropriate because. It's you know what are the historical document historical documents that tell us exactly how for instance this northern curve happens or you know you can see the how complex kind of and intricate the modern borders are because we have very detailed files about how those happen but the historical border kind of like sweeps in through northern Vietnam into half of Burma there 
um, kind of rides the Himalayas and then, you know, above Nepal kind of comes down into India and it just, um, it's generalized for a reason, probably because we don't, you know, um, an undergroup knew that we didn't really have great, um, resources to know exactly where these borders were. And it was also a time in which, um, it was more kind of nebulous, right? these different major cities were in control and then the surrounding regions kind of contributed to, uh, you know, the tribute to those, to the empire. And so a crisp border is fairly arbitrary, but it's necessary because that's how everybody um, wants to think about, a, you know, an empire. So there's one set, right? Very generalized, um, looks like it was maybe digitized in Illustrator, kind of these arcs with the with kind of a spline pen tool shape. Um, if we go to the next map and look at its borders, the National Geographic map, um, again, very interesting because we can see in some places where they've made some definite decisions, right? Um, for instance, to me, it looks like this border goes from the tip of Lake Bacal to this river, and it kind of just, there's an arbitrary arc in here that goes there and then it follows the river very kind of precisely and then kind of just makes for the Sea of Japan straight. So it looks like the National Geographic version is to be a little bit more um, kind of using water features and then doing little leaps of faith kind of between these river boundaries. Um, you know, and as we get into Europe, um, kind of the Russian principalities, it looks like it's a little bit more defined, like they, they know something that we don't, you know, about kind of just where it it went in that area. You know, down over here, clearly there's a sultanate, and they're not sure if they want to include that as part of the, uh, the you know, of the entire empire, or if it should just remain its own thing. Um, you know, compared with the other map, that region in Turkey is interesting because uh, the Ilkhanate is being represented as one object which you know for sure like we need to generalize sometimes so it's okay but here they've said well actually this region of Kanya um, actually was subject to the empire but it's its own kind of um, it's, it has a little bit of autonomy that maybe is not a part of this Ilkhanate so in Kashmir same way right in these kind of satellite principalities so just kind of be conscious of that. How do cartographers make the decision, right? Yep, let's follow the mountains up Oak Kashmir. Okay, who knows why there's this boundary is like placed like that. Maybe it's because of modern boundaries. Um, same here, right? It goes down along the edge here, that shore of Vietnam. At least we have a very crisp border with the ocean, and that's kind of a nice thing. So that's that one. I'm going to go to one more. And the Met version is in the same land as, I, I mean, they almost look like very similar boundaries to Anandarup's. Um, a little bit more squiggly on this border, and we don't know if this is just somebody with a pen tool being like, woohoo, you know, <laughs> we don't know what's going on there, but, um, but I think it would be interesting to put all these maximum extent borders on top of each other sorry, these maximum extent borders on top of each other, so we can just kind of compare them. So that's what the next few videos are about. Um, go ahead and open up QGIS, and we'll, we'll georeference each of these um, because we have the projection information. Like I said before, this one's in the Robinson projection, 70 degrees east, it's centered right on 70 east. Um, Nanda Roop's map is a, an Albers conic equal area projection. And you can't read it that well, but I think it says the parallels are 34 north and 46 degrees north. Um, yeah, I'm going with that. 40, yep, 46 and 34 degrees north. And then we could also estimate that it's centered on 70 degrees east. And the other one, the National Geographic one, we look down here. And it's an orthographic projection. You sh probably should have guessed that if you'd watched the projection videos because it looks like a globe. And it's centered on 34 degrees north and 86 degrees east. So we'll use that information to georeference each of these individual files. 
and we'll kind of go from there. Okay, 